Yes. So we have these inter interdependency issues uh, that we're looking at on the AI side, but we still have the rest of IT to look at as well. Uh, earlier this week, uh, uh, early uh, late last week, actually, I was at IBM Think uh, over in Boston, uh, my old stomping grounds where I lived for 20 years, uh, will always have a place in my heart for Boston. Um, but uh, one of the interesting things I saw there was they announced a product called IBM Concert that helps companies to look at interdependencies and compliance gaps across the software ecosystem. They can see which uh, pictures or photos or videos or documents are linked to multiple applications and then see how that might be a compliance risk if, uh, for instance, access to that document is uh, opened up to the world at large or to employees that should not have access to certain applications or certain capabilities. So being able to see uh, these interlinked uh, relationships across software and across software assets and across software uh, access uh, it, it, across your entire company is an interesting capability, I think, at a time when we're looking at the thousand plus apps that exist in the standard enterprise, as well as honestly, the thousands of apps and agents that are about to come into play with this new uh, set of uh, AI factory capabilities and the new uh, development uh, capabilities that are coming into play in the AI world. So <clears throat> two media comments. Uh, the first is, is it going back to the Microsoft and the 130 co-pilots, this you're, you're nailing part of the challenge that I guess I have with that, that and I didn't articulate it well, mm -hmm. and that we already have so much complexity in the enterprise. The last thing we want to do is introduce more, and that's what <laughs> I, I fear that's doing. Um, the second thing is IBM needs to hire you because I read that press release twice, and you just did a better job of explaining what the heck it really is doing than that press release did. I mean, it was it – was, I, I, love, I read that press release scratching my head going, isn't this just an APM tool? And now you just explained it in a way that was so much more clear – um, as to what this is really all about. And that solves, you know, that it is in fact solving a very significant issue in this time of complexity um, that I think organizations are facing. And, and I'm rather than focusing specifically on what it does, um, I'm not a big fan of, or not a fan of, but I'm, I don't dig deep into the compliance and security and risk areas that much. Um, but what I do think it, it speaks to and what I appreciate about it is that I think the, the evolution of all of this is, you know, we spend a lot of time talking about these frontier models and they're necessary because they're the foundation of everything. But where the rubber meets the road is when we can start applying this technology in a very meaningful way. What I love about <clears throat> this particular story is that while there's a generative element to it, mm -hmm. it is also using these models in a much more pragmatic and a non-conversational way that actually produces real value in an operational context when we're trying to grapple with all this complexity. And, and that I think is a, a really critical part of the story that often gets missed. You know, one of the companies that I'm working with is a company called Symphony AI, and they're super, super big on this connection between generative and predictive AI and bringing them together. And I think if you as an organization, as a tech company, aren't going down that road where you're not just like, how can I create a, create a conversational interface to slap on top of something? you're going to miss the boat because it, it, we need both these pieces together to solve the real problems. And this announcement by IBM is a classic example of that. It's like, you, you don't solve this by just exposing the data. There's too much data, you know, applying this layer of AI to help sort through it becomes super, super critical. So uh, now that I understand what they do, thank you very much. Um, I think it's great. It's cool stuff. Yeah. Uh, but I have to admit that although I, I find it to be a cool capability and I think about SaaS management and uh, governance issues. I also think to some extent that this is a little challenging from a productization uh, component uh, perspective because when I try to figure out who in the CIO organization is responsible for understanding broad software interdependencies at scale, that doesn't sound like a specific person's job to me. And it doesn't sound like the primary task for any of the most strategic jobs 
uh, in the CIO world. Obviously, it matters a lot from a governance perspective. It does matter to any uh, IT architect uh, as a major component, but it's not anybody's primary job. Uh, this feels like something that uh, can add to multiple people's jobs. Yes, the the CISO should be, definitely look at this. Anybody involved in governance, risk management, and compliance should be looking at this. Anybody who is thinking about software portfolios should be looking at this. As anybody who's involved in content management in a broad way should be looking at this. Yes, they're like all these roles should be looking at this kind of data, but it's none of those people's primary job to look at this IBM concert uh, graph of interdependencies and capabilities and say, ah, okay, this is going to be 80% of my job. <laughs> so I, I well, think that's a challenge. Know, so on the, yeah. So I think that's a challenge on the AI side that we're going to see all these cool capabilities. Uh, people are going to sell it as products. And then I think the immediate next uh, answer is going to be, so who's going to buy this and how do we actually <laughs> use this correctly? So I think this is bigger than an AI issue. I think there's a lot of really interesting software companies that have come out, come to market, and part of their big problem is that they are closing a gap. But the reason they're closing, the reason that gap exists in the first place is nobody is responsible for closing that gap. Mm -hmm. And so they don't have a natural economic buyer. They have to go all the way to a CIO or maybe all the way to a CEO, right, to, to find somebody who actually owns the whole thing enough to care about solving that problem. Yes. Now, what's interesting about that, <clears throat> so the economic buying problem aside for a moment, is that going all the way back to what we've been talking about, starting with Microsoft and the 130 co-pilots, um, and this idea of mixing agentic AI elements, predictive AI, conversational AI all together, is that I think there's an opportunity here for a class of technology that sort of sits in the this, this middle space whose job it is to close gaps. And instead of having to create me, new people, because we, we talked about the fact that I've got these functional domains for a reason, but those are also the problem, right? And so so to, to sit there and peanut butter across that and, and act as, the, as an intelligence layer to connect the dots. So you're right, no one person is, this is their whole job, but if I can stick a layer of technology of an AI that it is their job and then it feeds those alerts or say, hey, you better be looking at this to the people whose job is somehow related to it at the right time, suddenly that can be super powerful. So you still have to solve, who do, who do you sell that to? Who cares enough to buy it? But once you get past that, it could be a really interesting layer where it never makes sense to build a functional team to do that. But if I can apply an agent, an AI agent to do that job, that could be really interesting. So I think, I think you know, uh, what I think is going to be the next stage, and I don't know if this is in a year or 10 years, but we're going to start seeing, a, I think, a transformation how organizations are structured and, and function as we start seeing AI start changing the way we can operate. So it, it's going to be a, um, a lot more to come, I think, with, around yeah. this kind of stuff. One thing I've seen recently, uh, both at Boomi World and Informatic World, the uh, obviously two big uh, integration players in the IT world, is that they've been talking about uh, initial steps on how to manage agents and figure out how to do agent integration, figure out these agent catalogs. And the story is very similar to application integration and API management strategies, but focused on the agent strategy. And I'm not sure that that capability is going to work exactly as modeled because AI requires a little bit of additional thinking uh, rather than specific a API or uh, application uh, definitions. Uh, there might be, have to be some sort of uh, intermediate AI to figure out some of that parsing, maybe this mixture of experts approach uh, to help uh, figure out what goes where as some sort of a train conductor for AI agents, for lack of a better uh, analogy, uh, is going to have to exist. But I, I, I agree with you, Charlie, that this uh, into this uh, light intermediate peanut butter layer of figuring out what is going to actually go where and who's going to work with what is going to be increasingly important as we start having all these co-pilots and all these agents and all of these other AI related capabilities that are all going to be super useful, but uh, aren't necessarily uh, transparent and obvious at a moment's notice that you're trying to get to them. <laughs> 
Yeah, no, absolutely. I think it's, uh, you know, I think the big takeaway that I'd be looking at is step one, where we're at is figure out how you can use AI to solve specific problems. Step two is start thinking about how you can start using AI to, to reimagine what those problems are or how you're actually functioning and working. Um, and I think, you know, that that may be the bigger, the bigger, there, there's some other articles that we'll talk about next week. I think that will be the the bigger challenge because we're we are just at the beginning stages of I think the cultural transformation within organizations that's going to have to happen as we start really figuring out how to leverage and operationalize and and applying it to solving these real problems. Um, and I think you know the interesting part is it's moving super super fast, but we're still at the very very early stages. But I know we're already running long, so I think there is what is there, I don't know how much more else we want to cover. 